Hey nerds, Hector Mirai here from Faith and Fandom and The Pull List and all the other nerdy things. I'm just here to bring you this week's Bible Thump. And it's it's Christmas time and <laughs> like my house is a swarm of wrapping paper and piled up gifts under trees and hot chocolate all over the place and my kids wearing pajamas all the time for like no good reason and uh just in the place thinking about gifts and you know what some of the best gifts i've ever received are or the the worst and <laughs> things like that but uh have you ever gotten a gift that straight up felt like the person that got you gift of whatever nature just had absolutely no idea who you were like you get something that straight up just says do you have any freaking clue who i actually am um you know i've i've gotten some of those over the days and over the years and where i'm like i get that you just bought something that was on clearance but dang homie you could you could have at least have <laughs> made an effort to at least put it in my general bubble. Um, not that I'm not appreciative or grateful or anything like that, but you know it really makes a difference when you're actually giving somebody a gift, especially at Christmas or a birthday. That's something they actually want. Um, there's been seasons of my life where I legit looked not forward to my birthday. Or Christmas, but like with like utter regret in advance because I was sure that uh, the gifts that I was going to receive were going to tell me that A, people don't actually care about me as much as I care about them, and B, that uh, they don't know me. And both of those things make me feel, you know, like isolated and alone and insecure because, you know, I'm a human and have feelings. Um, but sometimes you get really surprised. Like uh, for my birthday this year, um, my wife and kids got me a ultra saber, like a hardcore Star Wars lightsaber. And I legit was looking, not looking forward to my birthday because thinking, okay, I'm going to get some gift that's going to make me feel like my family doesn't even know me. And then like, they got me something I actually really wanted and probably would have never bought on my own. And I'm like, Oh, you got me. <laughs> and low key. Cause she's not going to hear this before. Um, <laughs> she's not going to hear this before Christmas. Um, but, uh, you know, it's also like my wife bought me an Xbox, uh, series X for Christmas. She doesn't know. I know. And I only know because, you know, I was checking our bank account and saw an Xbox size hole and I'm like, Oh dang, I didn't know you were going to go that hard. Um, but this is the thing, like the gifts that we give people kind of show how much we're paying attention to them and how much we actually care. In some senses, gifts don't prove love, but I think the the heart behind the gift really does stand out to say, hey, I actually see you and I want to give you what you want. Um, and there's that thing that if someone else gives you a gift and you don't have a gift for them, you automatically have that awkward panic moment where you're like, oh, man, I didn't get them a gift. I need to give them a gift. What do I do? And you straight up have to come to a place where like, Oh man, what can I give them? Can I give them this? Should I give them this? Can I bring them this later? Um, but when we give a gift, because you know, we got to get, that's, that's reciprocation. That's like giving because we got, and for me, when I think about this and I think about Christmas and who Jesus is, one of the things is that he is the greatest gift we've ever received. He is the greatest gift of all time. And, you know, in that, in that manner, in that mindset, if he is a gift, how do we give back? And, you know, growing up in church or, you know, around church culture, the only time you ever really hear about giving to God 
is when you are, you know, passing a plate or a bucket or whatever. Um, most people don't talk about giving to God um, when it comes to anything other than money in church quite often. And the reality is if the only way we're giving to God is our dollars, then that's the effective equivalent of giving God socks for Christmas because it's not what he wants and it's not what he needs. Yeah, it could be useful, but that's not actually what he calls us to give or to what he actually desires. So, so left me with this question of like, what's the way we actually give back to God? Like, What's, what's the appropriate way we give to God? And so there are a couple things that popped up in my mind that I just wanted to share of ways that biblically and scripturally we're told what we should give God and that what we should give back to Jesus. And one of the best ways that I see in scripture that God actually requires, requests, calls us out to give is that we can give back to God by giving his love freely to others and to him as well. Um, we want to check out this passage. It's in first John four, uh, verses 13 through 21. And it says this, this is how we know we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit and it, we have seen and testified the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Verse 19 says this, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or si brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And, you know, it's, it's this mindset, this thing that Jesus tells us through his word, through John, that if we really want to give God something he wants, then we give love back to others that we be a reflection and a clear representation of the love that he has given us. And, you know, you know, it's a thing of like, if somebody gives you clothing at Christmas, you wear it the next time you see them so that they can say, Hey, you're wearing the sweater. I bought you or, you know, whatever us showing love to other people is like displaying the love that God has given us. It's like wearing our awkward sweater for our weird aunt. It, it legitimately is God gave you that gift. So we show our love, <clears throat> our appreciation for that by wearing it, displaying it and giving it to other people. So one of the ways we can effectively give a gift back to God and it's by showing love others and you know we it's i when it comes to scripture these aren't just requests these are you know commands these are things we're told to do and you know i get it may not be just a voluntary gift if it's a command but if your heart is giving when you do it it, it does make a difference but another way on that note that we actually give god something he wants is by actually giving obedience. Obedience doesn't always become this thing that we attach to love or to uh, walking 
in a way that, you know, we're, we're walking in Jesus. We talk about love all the time. We talk about these things, but like the reality is Jesus gave us commands. Jesus gave us instructions. And if we're only giving obedience out of obligation or requirement, we're not giving him what he actually wants. And, you know, Jesus says this himself in John 14 verses uh, 15 through 21. Check this out. He says, this is Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. Uh, that's, you know, it's just a period straight out statement. John 14, 15. And that's Jesus saying, show me love by doing what I commanded you to do. And that literally was a life changing verse for me to be able to hit that verse. Like, why am I, why am I obeying? Am I obeying? Cause I don't want to get caught. Am I obeying it? Cause I don't want to get in trouble. Cause no, I need to obey scripture, the word of God, the Holy spirit. I need to obey because it's the way that I show love to God, to sh- how I show love to Jesus. Effectively, obedience is Jesus's love language. He showed love to his father by obeying and living out sacrificially. And we show love to Jesus by living out his word in obedience. But uh, going back, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You also will live on that day. You will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. And this is this is the kicker. This is like Jesus reiterating that big thought. Verse 21 says, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. Jesus straight up says in verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Jesus says, look, you want to show me you love me. You want to show me that you're genuine. You want to show the reality of our relationship. Keep my commands. Legitimately, he said twice in a matter of just six verses, obedience shows love to me obedience doesn't mean automatic righteousness obedience doesn't automatically mean holiness obedience doesn't automatically mean salvation obedience isn't something that always changes the landscape but obedience is genuinely what jesus asks of his people and if we as his children if we as his followers if we have christians as christians aren't willing to give Jesus our obedience, then whatever we're giving him is kind of a crappy gift. You know, it's, you know, I'm not going to love, I wouldn't have loved my wife less this Christmas if she hadn't bought me an Xbox. Um, but the reality is she gave me something she knew I wanted and something I had talked about. And, you know, she showed me that she was listening. She showed me that she was paying attention. She showed me that she was willing to give me something that honestly, I wasn't even going to buy for myself. I I'd, I'd straight up told my wife, I am not buying an Xbox until Halo drops. Um, that's, that's only because I made it in line too late to buy it the first day they came out. Um, but I wanted it. And I wasn't going to go with the effort to actually try and chase them down because Halo's not dropping until the spring. So I was like, you know what? Whatever. But she went out of her way to give me something she knew I wanted because it mattered to me. And we've got this mindset that because we have grace, we don't have to treat obedience as a priority. But the reality is our obedience, yes, is our disobedience and our obedience, our sinfulness, all of those things 
are covered and dealt with in the blood of Christ. Absolutely. He has paid for our sins. Yep, fully acknowledge that. But the reality is he tells us that if we love him, obey him. For all he's given us, for all that he's done for us, for all the love he's shown us, he makes this command, he makes this request. You know, um, the first one in John 14, 15 is, if you love me, keep my commands. He made it a conditional statement. If you love me, do this, please. Do this, I command you. Um, like He legit says, if you love me, please do this. And then he reiterates it in verse 21. Whoever actually has my, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. He says a conditional statement, if you love me, do this. And then he flips it around and just says, the ones who actually loves me are the ones who do this. And I want to live my life. I want to give my life as a gift to God, a offering offered up that, yes, I know my obedience will not save me. I know my works will not save me. I know that nothing I do could earn my salvation. But when I am pitted with the choice of obedience or disobedience, I want to be able to look at my Savior. I want to be able to look at Jesus and actually give him obedience, not out of fear, not out of discouragement, not out of obligation. But I want to be able to look at Jesus and say, I'm obeying you because I love you. Because I love you, I'm giving myself to you in that. And I would hope that my obedience, as broken and shattered as it is, would be a gift that my Savior could delight in.